welcome everybody to the next class warfare man it feels like a while since we've gotten together to go ahead and do one of these but but here we are we are about to go ahead and begin our bard content so we figured why not roll up some bards and throw them at glenn so, this, uh, so that i can kill them <laughs> this will be a good time and we welcome as always dear friend of the show who is becoming a regular on our class warfare's scald from awfully queer heroes scald good evening how are things on the left coast this evening Thank you so much. So good to be back. As always, love doing these with you guys. Things are good here in sunny California. We're starting to get a little bit of fall weather finally, but I am mostly just spent the day getting hyped up for all of this. And you say we're throwing bards at Glenn, but honestly, I think it's more like Glenn is being thrown at the bards. We'll see if we uh, survive. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Glenn, Glenn's general distaste for the bard class is fairly legendary. So we'll see how we'll see how this works I'm out. Not accurate tonight. anymore. One of my <laughs> previous. Okay, that's fair. Previous yeah, dislike previous is legendary. <laughs> Uh, I have been won over slowly but surely, and I think the five E bard actually is part of it. I think it does yeah. a better job of providing the bard with more utility than that little girl in the meme that you see, who looks like she's crying while playing the violin. And the caption is like, "When the party is dying, but you, all you can do is play because you're a bard." That's yeah. how I used to feel about bards. Yeah, they yeah. Were, but no, you accept the bard yeah. much more now. Yeah. Much more now. So they're yeah. crunchy and good cool. with ketchup. <laughs> all right let's get in here with with some character introductions first of all lou and Nico, why don't you start this evening who are you playing and what magic items are they playing with i am playing lieutenant commander eridrell tarsus severil and i am a, a, a lieutenant commander on a spell jamming ship tasked to this crystal sphere with a special mission of which I will only impart to a select few. <laughs> That's auspicious. <laughs> I like it. I like Very it. Honest. Uh, yes. And as far as magic items, I went with the glamoured studded leather and the cloak of protection. Cloak of Protection is relatively straightforward as far as what it's do doing for me. But as far as the glamoured started leather, it's a it's basically plus one leather that has some really nice ribbon role play abilities. Whether or not they come into play here or not, who knows? We'll, we'll find out. But in general, it allows quick changes of clothing. It can look like any armor I wish it to look like. So it's really good in that role play scenario. It's something that I honestly wish I had found ye years ago. Picked it up by watching uh, Ted from Nerd Emerge. Version. It was on his top 10 magic items bards should have. And I was like, that's a nice grab. I was already okay. grabbing plus one studded leather. Let's make that switch and see how that plays. Because I can already see the great role playing potential for this character in specific outside of a single combat scenario. Cool. All right. Excellent. All right, Scald, how about you? What are you playing tonight? And what magic items are they, are they grabbing? I will be playing as the illustrious Finnegus Tiny Bucket. I am a halfling, and I oh, we, we lost Josh. Oh, dear. He gets really he gets mad. Tiny, he gets really mad when people get his name wrong. He is not small can, nor is he little pale. This tiny bucket. You got to get it right. But I guess tiny bucket is a halfling bard, and he, my magic item is also the glamour stud leather armor. On him, it usually shows up in dark black. He wears mostly black, but because the armor can change its shape and form, he likes to adorn it in hot pink sequins. He has lots and lots of ear piercings and a very kind of bubbly personality, and he honestly just likes to explore and see the world. So he is Excellent. he is out and about just seeing all that he can and causing mischief and mayhem wherever he might perfect so short chamber pot would be bad as well he might take offense at that yes that could get you, <laughs> that could get you some cutting words for sure <laughs> i will Excellent. cutting words yes. uh, so i am playing the triton Seluna, and he is a college of valor bard my magic items are a plus one shield and a long sword of warning which of course gives me advantage on initiative rolls uh, so he's very much meant to be upfront and personal in the combat kind of a tank bard that i'm trying out here as a bard and and of course as appropriate his he's wearing scale armor being a triton i figured that that, that, that would work out well yeah his, uh, his job is to go ahead and be up front and i'm really kind of looking forward to this because i think it's i think it's going to work like a blade sticker because he has a lot of offensive magics also so i'm hoping that i'm hoping that this works out so you shall see all right all right mr myers 
Are we? How do we want to start this here? Do we want to want to roll initiative uh, well, first, or do you want to? You have a scenario for us. I'm going to present you with a scenario first. I'll let okay. you all decide amongst yourselves whether or not you have traveled together for a while and are familiar with each other and each other's tactics. If so, then you know, feel free to table talk or whatever mm. as you make decisions as a group. Just don't take too long. Yeah. If you decide that you're strangers, which could be fun, but a disadvantage for you, I don't recommend it. Then <laughs> play your cards a little closer to the chest. Mm. But okay. these three bards have all been attracted by the rumor of an ancient tome of lore that is supposed to be hidden in a crypt in the center of a blighted swamp that was once a kingdom of old. So old and so long ago, no one even remembers its name. Hmm. But in the center of the swamp, the only solid ground left is the cemetery where this crypt lay, lies. And somewhere within this crypt is supposed to be this ancient tome of lore, magic, and stories from the last age. You're pretty confident, and most of the rumors about it confirm that there must be something dangerous there, because many adventurers have gone before you over the years, and none have ever returned. Okay, that's not auspicious at all. There we are. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So can everybody see themselves on one side of a bridge leading towards the Waldorf area? Yes. Yes. And Josh, if you could cue up the music. I will cue up the music. Once you window your square. Oh, we've got music for this one? Music from a friend of the show, Sean McRow. So. Thanks, Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Okay, so. yes, I can see my tune on the map. All right. Got it. So after days of trudging through this swamp and then still managing to get a good night's rest just on the edge of the solid ground, you find yourselves across the bridge from your destination. The wall of the cemetery before you looms 12 feet high, which is taller than most cemeteries are built these days. The bridge in front of you is rickety, but in reasonable repair as it crosses a bit of the swamp, though you have been so soaked within the last few days, you could probably wade the stream and stay and not obtain any more dampness, especially from the cold mist that hangs in the air and the fog that surrounds it. Just outside of the wall ahead of you, you see a zombie or what appears to be a zombie, an undead form of, I mean, you can tell it's already like oozing putrescence, and, but it's leaned over the corpse of a deer chomping away merrily and you <laughs> see another one in the uh, just inside the gateway here that's the paintbrush not the pointer yeah just inside the gateway here that seems to be uh, not noticing you but shambling slowly towards his compatriot as it feasts on this animal on the side of the path How would you like to proceed? That's disgusting. <laughs> so long as there's no spiders, we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That seems to really be enjoying that deer, but that doesn't seem natural. I don't know about that. I mean, Have you ever seen me after a good night at the tavern? It's not too far <laughs> off. Mm. I suppose, I, although you normally keep your flesh on. No. This is true. I do tend to like it on me. <laughs> so we end it then? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I... I think we end this. I'm not happy with this. I am going to move up just a little ways and see if I can discern anything else about the area, if it seems like there's anything else around. So I'm going to go up and just cross the bridge and take a look around, see if I notice anything else. That perception check, it sounds like you just rolled. Yep. That is a... Let's do... What is my perception? That's going to be a 16. As you're peering around from this side of the bridge, you do notice that the wall is in... A pretty, pretty sad shape. There's mm. 
a lot of disrepair going on here. If I'm a little bit closer, you're able to see in just a little bit more through those breaks in the wall. Peer in through the fog. That's pretty wide. I'll give you a little more on long enough to say. Interesting. This isn't creepy at all. Not in the slightest. <clears throat> no, is, aside is... from the two zombies who may or may not have heard you, were you attempting to try to be stealthy? I was not. I just walked over. Granted, mm -hmm. I wasn't singing at the top of my lungs. There are zombies distracted by a fresh corpse. There. Well, Though... lads, lads, I'm afraid it's a stick of pea soup. Can't see much from here. All right. I'll I'll move up, Finnegus. You should you should let me take the point on this, and I will. I don't want anything to, to harm you, so I will. Uh, I'll move up and kind of stand in front of Finnegus here. Point um, of curiosity: How tall are you? I don't know how tall is a Triton. Like man size, six, five, six, five, six yeah, feet, something, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Well, I'm tiny, so I'll kind of look up and say, "You won't hear any complaints from me," and I'll just let you walk past. Yep. And are you attempting to be stealthy at all? Sure. I'm definitely. Yeah, I am trying to be stealthy. Okay. Let me roll my stealth check here. Let's see how you do. That is a modified twenty. Okay. And you do fairly well. The bridge creaks under your weight a little bit, but your mm -hmm. armor does not jingle too terribly, and the zombies seem to stay still fairly focused on their meal. The second one has reached it and is now hunched over it as well, and they're fairly engrossed. Okay. <laughs> and it's. Gross. And it's engrossing. And yeah. they're in. Blah. Yeah. 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 Have you ever seen an episode of The Walking Dead where yeah. they take yeah. down Rick's horse before he gets in the tank? Yep. Yep. Awesome. That's kind of what's okay. going on over there. I. Well. Arad, I'll let you decide what you're going to do here. But I'm definitely keening my eye on those zombies. And if they make any such movement towards us it will be met with resistance. Eredrell will cross the bridge but hang in the mists. He will also attempt to use stealth and a little further afield a little wider of the group just to make sure nothing comes up on our flank as well as to see if I can see anything else in that general direction. Okay, and your stealth check? Twenty-four. The unobservant zombies definitely do not notice you. They are completely engorged in their current endeavor. They're engorging themselves. Excellent. Okay. From this vantage point, do I see anything else in those areas that you've illuminated, like through those areas? Can I see? Yeah. I can give a bit more cut out. Unfortunately, I don't have anything but a square, <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> Although, in theory, I could make this draw to work, but that'll get all sloppy. So, I'll give you, based on where you are, you've got an angle over to, say, this wall. I will give you almost all the way over to there, behind that wall. A little bit extra here. And deeper in here. Okay. So inside those gaps, you're starting to see definitely some headstones and the mounds of graves. And you're pretty sure your footprints or like something's been moving or walking around through the dirt around those graves. What do you think, lads? Should we uh, perhaps make the acquaintance of these two guests before we move on, or are you feeling fairly confident? Let's take care of these two before... We don't want to leave anything behind us, uh, just in case. So we should Definitely we should don't take want care to get bit in the rear, that's for sure. Exactly. Agreed. Let's see. As we move up i'll move up a little bit around where seleneth is and poke my head out from behind him and shout oi oi you and see if i can get the attention of these two <laughs> and i'll just like make a rude gesture yeah. 
So you yell at the zombies? Yes. Okay. They turn towards you with like bits of entrails hanging off of their face and a glazed <laughs> expression. Like, ah. Oh. And their eyes, their eye sockets widen. And when, they start uh, shambling towards you. So I guess we should roll initiative or something. Yeah, it's an 18 for me. Twelve for Eredrell. And for that's a seventeen for me. Seventeen. Have them roll their initiative. Okay, so at the top of our initiative order, as the round begins, we have Selena. Okay, so I am going to... You know what? I get two attacks in action. We'll start there. So I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, that's fine. And I will attack... I'm um, attack the one to my left, first of all. We'll start there. Okay, so you're attacking here. Let's see. With the long sword of warning, it's only going to be a 12. Zombies are really easy to hit. That will do it. Didn't even seem right. hard. Okay, cool. I like it. So that's a d8 plus 2 for 3 points of damage. And then I have a second attack, so I will attack again. That one's a 15 for another 3 points of damage. I rolled a 1 on both my damage die. That's auspicious. Yeah. All right, we're so, going to make that one A now so that yeah. I can keep track of who's who in terms of hit points. Two points of damage and two successful attacks and six points of damage. That's, six points uh, of that's damage. Four, hey, yeah. that's six fewer hit yep. points than he had a minute ago, yep. but it doesn't seem to phase him much. Yep. I will, with a bonus action, I will give Finnegus Bardic Inspiration. I'll just call back and say, don't worry, these guys are super easy to hit. You've got this, little man. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay, and next would be those zombies, actually. They, for zombies, did crazy good on initiative. And also have an 18. So the zombie that you struck strikes yes. back, and he attempts to slam you. Will a 15 hit? It will not. His scabbering fingers leave bits of decaying flesh in the scales of your armor as he tries to grip Grab. The other one also attacks you. Will a 22 hit? Yeah, yes, that's right. Will a 22 hit? Yes, it will. And similarly, he does three points of damage to you. Fabulous. Excellent. As he attempts to grab hold and get any part of you he can into his mouth and drag you to the ground. Not today, zombie. That will bring us to Finnegus. All right. Aha! I am going to. Let's see. Those are almost at the edge of my range. Got a little short legs. I can't go very far. I'm going to fix my eyes on these two zombies that have squared off with Selena. And I'm going to say, Oi! You too! And flick my finger and there'll be a little pink spark. I'm gonna cast Bane. So they both need to make a charisma saving throw. Oh, they're very charismatic. <laughs> Twice. Yeah, That's one why of them got a 7. Nice. And one of them did get a 12. That's ha, okay. Three, so he rolled a 15. They both fail, which means on their attack rolls, they are going to need to subtract the d4. Okay. And this lasts a minute. So on their subsequent right. attack rolls, they'll need to subtract a d4 from each of those. Then I will run on my little bare fuzzy feet up along the road. Five, ten, use up all my movement to get next to Selenath, and I'm gonna whip out my little rapier with a flourish, and I'm gonna try and hit zombie A, kind of reaching around Selenath underneath where his arm is, just like, yeah, and stick him with that. And that is going to be a 11, 16 to hit. A 16 will definitely hit all day yes. and twice on Sunday. Heck yes. <laughs> I'll take it. Yep. And that's 28 plus 4. So that's 
six damage. Your rapier definitely hacks off some putrid flesh. Ha! More pierces through. And this zombie is clearly worse for the weather, at least bloodied. Nice. And Lieutenant Commander Eradriel. I will maneuver to here. Hurry up and maneuver. And I will look upon the foul creature and call out, may the light guide you. And cast sacred flame. Ooh. He Very has nice. a deck save to make. Oh, they're really and I'm though. firing at B, by the way. B. Yes. His result is a zero. <laughs> I think that's a failure. That's two minus two. Nice. And my result is 12 points of radiant damage. Ooh. Nice. That wouldn't hurt him. Feel the burn. Although, strangely enough, it's not listed as on a zombie. It's, it's not a it's not a vulnerability. It's not listed as a vulnerability. But you said how many points? Twelve points of radiant damage. Uh, regardless of the twelve points, I'm going to actually make the radiant mean he automatically fails his endurance save because that was enough to drop him. So that zombie is consumed in a pillar of holy fire. Ah. Okay. And burns yeah. completely to ash. No, he doesn't turn giant. <laughs> <He's> completely <laughs> to ash. <laughs> well, that was fun. It's like when a star dies, how it like it shoves off its outer coil and then grows. Yeah, balloons. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Any further um, actions? No ballooning zombies. Thank you. I do have some additional movement. The smell of so, cooking meat is overpowering. So I step back to this point and attempt stealth. Yeah. Okay, as in like you're just ducking down and hoping they don't see you, or do you have the ability to hide as a bonus action? I do not have the ability to hide as a bonus action. Okay, so you are just trying to be un unobtrusive. Um, Correct. I, I was hidden. I was hidden beforehand. I fired. I'm just the one I fired at is the other two or the other one is engaged, and then I step back and crouched. Gotcha. Throw me a perception check, please, as you're so close to the wall. Certainly. 19. Can you see this swirl in the fog above you? Follow me up. Yep. Okay. So you see something that looks like a torch flame just zooming along in the air. It's very small, tiny even. And it okay. didn't necessarily follow that exact path, but you just catch it flitting about amongst the gravestones. If it you were to give it a name, what it feels like it looks like it's doing is it looks like it's peeking around gravestones at you. Okay. But it takes no hostile action. Excellent. That's not weird at all. Not in the slightest. Yeah. Totally oh. normal. Selenuth. Yes. Or Selunath. My God. Selunath. Yeah. Yeah. So I am, I am right ticked at this dude in front of me here. He, you will see Selenath again with a so sword in hand, but he will cast it behind him and it begins to glow with a green flame as he casts green flame blade. Okay. And will make his attack. Ah, it's, it's a natural one. Oof. Roll a d6 with me, my friend. Hey, that's my trick. It's a six. And I also rolled a six. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Although, in class warfare, is what we do is just disadvantage, correct? On your next um, you are You've got your hand on the handles, my friend. So That's true, but I don't want to deviate from what we've established as our crit fail rule in, yeah. in class warfare. So yes. you'll simply have disadvantage on your next round. Okay. All right. That is, yeah, then that's my attack because I failed. So, uh, if only you had a bardic inspiration. <sighs> if only. <laughs> can I give myself? Oh, bard I can't so give myself bardic inspiration. 
Oh no, it's its turn first. I apologize. It goes between y'all. So it makes its slam attack. You and unfortunately, it's... a bard cannot inspire themselves, which is something yeah. we need to look at for our inspiration abilities. I don't. All of their it. attacks need the D4 subtracted from them. D4 subtracted. Yeah. yeah. Which he got a 15, and then we're going to take a D4 off of that. It's not going to hit anyway. Yeah, I was pretty sure that a 15 it was already yeah. missing. Now it's missing even more. Minus three is a 12. Whew. Yeah. This is a lot. All right. All right. I so let's see, Dana's concentration is a... how's this zombie in front of me looking? It is about half dead. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> looking fine since I got my sword stuck you, in the gear. You look about half dead to me. I will move up and I'm going to can I do a cantrip and a I can do a cantrip and a melee attack, correct? If the cantrip has a bonus action, absolutely is, is a bonus action, absolutely. Let's find out. I think it is. Do I actually want to save that. So instead, what I will do is I am going to attack with my rapier again on this guy. Try and hit him with it. That's going to be a 14 to hit. A 14 will hit. All right. Takes eight slashing damage or piercing rather. <laughs> eight piercing damage. Yeah. And then I will because where we are, I'm gonna go ahead and cast I'm actually I'm gonna give inspiration to Aradriel because of where he is near the wall and say, Let me know if you see anything and to give him a little wink and a nod. And yeah, that'll be my turn. All right. You definitely did some serious okay. injury to this yes. thing with that strike. You might even still, you might even have pulled back a kidney on your blade. Like, a all right, go flick it off to some. Yeah, that was good eats. Yeah. Oh, you could roast it over his friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, okay, so so uh, that's a question, actually, Glenn. So you said something about the spell of roasting meat because of the cooking zombie from the radiant fire. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Shoot, I was like, wait a minute. What are we? Who's cooking? Burning meat. Who's barbecuing? <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. So like the zombie that. corpse is burning and <laughs> literally <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. Oh, yeah, right. and Selenath is smells good. <laughs> Wait, still have to attack people. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So Aradriel will move to this position and but will as he's passing be looking down here. To see if he sees anything and whether or not he needs to make a move. I guess I'll move to there and see what I see as you I'm say going. down here. You're talking about up there. Down, okay. As you glance in that direction, you do see that same little streak heading in deeper end to the graveyard now. And can I see any further? Bearing in mind, I have dark vision. Yes, I will give you where you are. Some more visual. Probably should have for all of you, so good call. We'll just cut off this section here for you completely. Ooh, whoa, okay. Assuming that's a statue, not a actual mm -hmm. Green Reaper. Yes, that is a statue. <laughs> hey guys, we found death. <laughs> hey guys, I found the bridge to away from here. <laughs> right. I've seen this in that in in that in that play gauntlet. <laughs> yeah. Run away. <laughs> All right. All right. Not seeing any targets there. I will finish up my planned maneuver, which is to go to here. And again, I will scorching ray. The uh, or yeah, is that yeah? Scorching ray. Scorching ray works. I think I'm sorry. Was, scorching uh, ray. Sacred flame. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, yeah. I will sacred flame the remaining zombie. Is it okay? And zombie, zombie, zombie. And they, uh, they had a negative four. They had a negative four for saves. Also, I believe it was just on the attack rolls. Okay, but let me double check. Hold on, just double check and see what Bane has to say. It's oh, it is on saving throws as well. Yeah. All right, because he's got a seventeen now, so this could make a difference. Yeah. Minus two is a fifteen. Fifteen is a meet, and that beats it. And it is, I believe, oh, so. it is a save or suck. 
So, it is close. indeed a saver. So tragic that that bane almost made the difference. So close. Yep. Goodness. All right. And let's see. So that was. I don't move. After your tantrum? Oh yeah, there we go. No, I'm just finishing my my uh, my motion. I'm just moving to that spot, so nothing can come at me from behind me unless they go through a wall. At which point, it'll be what it'll be. Fair enough. Okay, and that brings us to Selenath. All right, now I'm now I'm pissed because I like missed. I spent a spell to go ahead and hit this guy and missed. So now I'm just going to attack him again with the longsword. Nothing fancy, nothing wild. First attack is an eighteen. That will hit. For eight points of damage, that's slashing. All right. Let's see. Is he still standing? He's there. He might be. Let's see what his save for fortitude is. He is not. Okay. All right. With that blow, you cut him in half. Cool. Um, I will, let's see. I will take my movement to here and I would like to hide behind this little embankment and I want to get a perception within the uh, within the field here. Let's make your perception roll if you would, sir. Okay. That is a 12. As you're peering through there, you see something small scurry amongst the headstones, but based on its movement, you're pretty sure it was some kind of an animal whether a raccoon, a rat, a skunk, something. But How far away is it? How far away is it? Over here. Okay. Do I have, I have an attack left. Can I throw a, can I throw a dagger at it? You sure can. Yeah. I would like to do that. Is that that's definitely long range for it. Definitely dagger. long range. Right, so we'll be at disadvantage. That's fine. That is a 19. That will hit. For six points of damage. You hear a loud squeak. And something falls still. Excellent. Got him. Congratulations, you have reduced the local vermin population. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped out at me. Could have been dangerous. Might have been. Better than have your toes bit. I will come up to the road here and peek in and see what my halfling eyes can see in the dark beyond. That is a nat 20 on perception. Okay, so way up the steps of this building through the center up here that you see. I'll give you a little bit further onto, that's the wrong tool, onto that building. Cloud cutter. Way up here, you see a floating porch-like object. I'll turn on and go, wait, so not, there's, a, there's something up there, up the steps, and I'll point through the gloom. I, I don't like the look of it, whatever it is. And you hear a strange, hollow hooting noise it's like a hooting whistle blowing air over the top of or out of a tube or a milk jug either someone's doing improvised instrumental practice or we have a problem but either way i am mildly concerned there's, there's something up there probably just the graveyard jug band i think we're okay <laughs> Rodrigo. i will make my maneuver since they have that point of attack well covered. I'll move through here. Okay. To here. So I'm going to give you most of the map at this point. As you can see all the way up the sides the most part of where you are 
You're just missing what's inside that wall, which is clearly the crypt thing that you're looking for. And you can see most of it, just not all of it. From where you are, you can see all the way over as well. And as you step in, the small zooming light zooms back towards you just a bit, and a voice calls out. Ah! Welcome! My master says he assumes you have come for the book. We have... There need be no more bloodshed. Those that wander outside the walls are no longer under our protection. We would propose a different contest. As he says this, I would like to, trying to stay out of view, I would like to sneak up a little ways into the road. And I am trying to stay out of sight and be stealthy. So I'm going to go up to about there. And I can do stealth check for that. It's 10 plus, so it's 22. 22. That is pretty darn stealthy. You feel like it's not seeing you at all. Okay. I will just hunker down and pretend to be a rock. All right. You all appear Yes, we've been watching you for some time as you came through our swamp, and you all appear to be talented musicians. Hmm? We have various talents. I will step out from my spot and just start walking down the road a little bit. My master... I am... And this flaming skull flies up a little bit closer. My, my master in life was once a great musician himself. And as opposed to bloodshed, would rather challenge you to a battle of music. Oh, I want to accept this. Should you beat him, and we will have a fair and impartial judge, should you beat him, the book is yours. Ha ha ha! But should you fail... Your souls are ours. A brief interlude. I have lived my whole life waiting for the moment I got to go down to Georgia, and I am all freaking for it. Eradriel, you get a message in your head from Selenath. We're kicking this guy's ass. In song. <laughs> I will stand up from where I've been crouched hiding and move over a little bit to where Selenoth is and says, All right, then let's dance, fancy pants. I'll step up. Mm. I didn't wear my dancing armor, but I think I'll be okay. All right, how do I get the rest of this crap to go away? Bart, bear with me a second. It's my first time playing with the <laughs> War tool if, in this. And if you, so if you just in. It's one of the icons in the middle there it just says delete all. I think it's the one that looks like a cloud. <sighs> You're right. There you go. Ah. Nice. It might be the one next. If you, yeah, there you go. If you click the. There's still a Tetris L. Yeah, ah. that's great. If you take the yeah. eraser, you just draw, uh, drag over it, and it should go away. There you go. There you are. Ah. Screw them all. Oh. <laughs> I love this map. This is a good map. a good map, yeah. Okay. Return. Very well, then. And the crypt door opens and out steps. Adulahan. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Ooh. Though he is not carrying a flaming head in one hand, but rather simply strides forward with his cape billowing ominously behind him, though there is no wind. Hmm. And the mists seem to part 
as he walks through them as though he's making a grand entrance onto a stage. And he steps forward and he takes a deep bow. And the strange hooting noise comes from the holes in his severed neck. And the uh, flame skull turns towards him for a moment and says, yes, uh, bear with me. And he turns back to you. And he says, would you like to perform first or second? My lord is so confident that in his ability to destroy you musically that he will give you the choice. Let him go mm. first. Yes. Yeah. Let's see what he can do. The Dulahan shoulders shake as though he's laughing, and the strange hooting is odd and abbreviated <laughs> with weird squelches and occasional spurts of old stagnated blood. Gross. As he steps forward. And he's got the large pommel of something on his back looks like a weapon pommel but it's strangely blocky at one end and the He's flaming really head comes over here and settles on his neck hole and he reaches <laughs> back behind him and he pulls out a mighty battle axe that looks like this nice <laughs> all right let's go let's go <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and he drags his fingers from the top of the cords down, and fiery strings appear. Let me bring you back to the other map. And as he strums the first couple of experimental chords, an eerie music breaks out, and the chattering head. Was floating above his neck hole. It says, wait, we need the judge. And the uh, headless apparition seems to sigh and then makes a loud whoot out of his neck hole. <laughs> and a ghost rises up out of the ground. You called. You will be the judge. And life. You were also a musician, though nowhere near as good as my noble lord, so you will judge the competition fairly and equally. But remember, should you choose them, well, our lord will be unhappy with you. But remember to be impartial. And he strums heavily across his keys, and other ghosts begin to flit in to watch. And the first eerie chords of his unearthly tune begin to float through the air. And a few more ghosts join him in the background with ghostly instruments and form a full band. And his song is alien and strangely beautiful and haunting. Let's see how well he does it, though. Oh, that's the wrong button. Yeah. Too long. Because for a headless guy, he's got a solid, uh, a solid charisma. And he throws out a 17 for his performance check. It's a pretty solid performance. You guys are impressed. Mm. And also weirdly cold and shivery all at the same time. <laughs> and as the final chords fade and as these ghosts behind him put their instruments down, he laughs his hooting, blood-spurting laugh again and gestures to the center area here for you to take the stage. And the ghost and all of the other ghosts are all clapping silently around him. <laughs> all right. Very well. All right. Now it is your turn to <clears throat> attempt. All right. Which one of us has got the better performance score? We perform as one. We do indeed. We are a band. I well, am going to scoot up a little bit into the front because I'm short. I will have reached down into the into the kind of dirt and mud around my feet, gotten some charcoal or whatnot, and given myself a little bit of eye makeup here. So we can go. Nice. I'm going to whip out my flute, and very quickly I'm going to cast Pyrotechnics 
So we've got a little bit of this dark purplish colored flame that's going to just come and form a little bit of a circle around us while we play on the ground and we can do our little trio with the fire here. Amazing. I put um, down my backpack. Then again, you may have inspiration. That's not normally something awarded, but it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's yes. do it. Well done. So I, I set down my, my, my backpack and put my sword back in its scabbard and my shield on the ground. And I pull out a set of bagpipes and nice. begin playing this wailful morning tune to, to, as if, as if calling on the energies of the graveyard themselves, but the tune, it does have this dissonant aura to it as it floats through and i'd like him to give me a wisdom save please how many creatures can it affect targeting uh, specifically a creature i'm targeting him the uh, the dulan yeah Whew. Yeah. 21. <sighs> cool so yeah he just thinks it's this weird dissonant tune just floating on through and i'll mark yeah. that spell off. what was it as dissonant it was, I was casting Dissonant Whispers. Dissonant Whispers, nice. Very nice. Yeah. Th through my bagpipes, which felt appropriate. Absolutely. <laughs> as, as my bandmates begin to play, I am focusing in on the rhythm that they are beginning to make. I step into a, I step into position, step back a little bit and take out my hand drum and I will use the back, the use occasional hits on the tombstone next to me to have to make additional sound and rhythm and i started playing with this rhythm as i am playing i am building to a crescendo and it's just like this rousing drumming this and just lifting the sound up and then i will cast thunderclap on my on my on my ending beat to to which will be heard for for a hundred feet around and thunder, like it will shake loose leaves from the trees. It will lift dirt, loose dirt at uh, on the ground surrounding me. And it will literally cause the loose rocks on the broken walls to shift and, and shudder as I literally am waking the dead with the uh, with this amazing beat that I'm attempting to play. Yeah. And I will go over my performance check. You will notice that more ghosts have appeared as you've been playing, because you are. And they're jamming out and dancing around you. And this is definitely probably the most bizarre experience any of you have ever had in the same time. <laughs> right. I'm, I am here for it. When he casts Thunderwave, I'm going to make all the fire around us just up. Nice. And if we are rolling performance checks, mine Absolutely. is a, That's a 10 21. Woo. Jo Josh, you can have Bardic Inspiration. I will take it. <laughs> I will take it. Can I use it right now? <laughs> yes, I will let you retcon giving every, each other inspiration earlier because yeah, yeah. Fine. What's your, your bardic inspiration? Is what a, D, a D10 right now? Yes, it, it should be. The same, we're all the same level, so it should be. Yeah, the same yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a twelve total on my performance check, even with the bardic inspiration. Okay, I am okay. not rolling tonight. I'm rolling I, early. I rolled a fourteen. So did you say that somebody gave me inspiration as well? Yeah, Finnegan gave inspiration it to you earlier. earlier. Definitely, yeah. legitimately. Yeah. Okay. And. That will give me a, a dirty 20. Okay. Nice. So we got a 20, a 22, and a 12, which is still yeah. a solid performance. Since yeah. you're rocking the bagpipe, that's kind of like the background melody, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the pyrotechnics and the, the other part. All right. Let's see how the judges saw it. My instrument is a pan flute, by the way. So I'll be rocking an nice. upstep to like graveyard dirge. Yeah. <laughs> pan flute dubstep. Yes. Heck yeah. I'll, I'll and, uh, drop the beat. <laughs> As the thunderclap fades and there's silence for a moment as the last of the purple flames die down, the ghosts surrounding you look as though they're cheering as loudly as they can, though you cannot hear a sound, and jumping up and down and waving their arms. And so is the judge, ghost. And she did right. not react the same way. Let's for... go. And can I skull is looking can... at the ghost that's jumping up, the ghost jumping up and down and looking at you and looking at the ghost and looking at you. And he goes, oh, no, this is not good. And the doula hand goes, Whoa! <laughs> and with one mighty swing of his axe dissipates the judge ghost completely. Oh, snap. 
and all of the other ghosts flee and pass. <laughs> And he swings his axe towards you as his hoot is still echoing through the graveyard. And the skull scoots off in this direction. Yes, master. Now we kill them. Nice. <laughs> That's cheating. And the hoot seems to rumble deeply around you and through your chest and into the ground itself. Oh. That's not good. And four zombies claw their way out of the dirt. All right. So you clearly won the Battle of the Bands, but the dual hand doesn't seem to be honoring his deal. But we will maintain the previous order of initiative and the Doolahan and the flame skull were last and as they just moved previously we'll start at the top of initiative okay with someone let's see here all right he will as his item interaction draw his sword again and throw his bagpipes down pick up his shield and look at you two you two take them i've got him and he will take his movement that's not gonna work there you go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and he will attack. The Dula hand rolls its shoulders in anticipation as it watches you closing. Yeah, that is an 18 on the first attack. An 18 will hit. Woohoo! Okay, I'll roll the other one too, just to let's see. Se second attack is an 11, so I'm assuming that one will not that hit. All right, so D8 plus two, three points of damage. Protecting a theme. Yeah, that's, yeah. This is His poor. torso shakes and small hoots come out the top of it as laughter as bits of gore and blood spray out of his neck. Some of it land <laughs> on your shield. Ugh. Gross. Okay, yeah, that's my turn. Okay, the zombies are next. This zombie is already right here, so he goes for Eladriel. And this one goes five. Zombies have short movement, right? No? Okay. 10, 15, 20. 5, 10, 15, 5. All right, so these two pet back here attack Eladriel. To a zombie, not the Dulahan for the swinging part. Does a 16 hit? Eladriel? Liwanega? I got mute. Dean will. Yes, he beats it. All right. So one hits, and the other one with an eight will miss. So the one that hit deals six damage as it tries oh. to use its weight to slam into you and drag you down, attempting to get anything okay. it can in its mouth. Okay. Does six, you said? Six damage, yes, sir. So that's two zombies. A. B. Hey, hey. C. One of them will attack Finnegan. Oi! Oof, with a 20, dirty. Mm. That's well, that, definitely a hit. Oh, yeah. That, that, for three damage. Okay. And one of them will... attack with a 12 and miss. Our Valor Bard. Not on the right screen to see your name, and I cannot remember it. Selenoth. Thank you. Too many things open. Bear with me one second. That's part of my confusion. Okay. And that will bring us to Finnegan. 
All right, all right, all right. This guy who took a swing at me, I am going to... I... Let's see. Yeah, the one right in front of me. I am going to... Let's see, does, does Eradriel still have inspiration? Or not inspiration, yeah, Bardic inspiration currently. No? Okay. He used it on um, his performance, I believe. Yeah, I used it on my performance to get the dirty 20. Gotcha. Okay. In that case, I huh, I took a spell from I'm College of Lore, and I took a spell that everybody hates, so I'm going to face off with this guy who took a chunk out of me, and I'm going to go, oi! And I'm going to snap my fingers and kind of flick my hand and send a bolt of this bright, hot pink fire out of my hand. I'm casting Eldritch Blast at this one. Nice. nice. <clears throat> and da, da, da. so that's especially like the hot pink. Oh yeah, hot pink, <laughs> bright hot pink. That's a eighteen to hit. That will hit. Okay, and let's see, three. I need to do a different attack roll for each one, so I'll direct. Um, one of the beams at this guy in front of me, one at the Dulahan, and one at D. So that one was an 18 to hit the first zombie. The one to hit D is a 10. And then the one to hit the Dulahan is a 21. Okay, so anything over an 8 will hit the zombies, and the Dulahan Sweet. will get hit with a 21. Yes! Are you okay. said you were casting Elder's Blast? Or yes. Or Eldritch Blast splits three ways? It's got three bolts, yeah. Because of your level. Never mind, yes. I'm crazy. Continue. No, you're, you're all good. Thank you for double checking. <laughs> so that's two, a 1d10 for each one. That is three for C, four for D, and nine for the Dulahan. This is bright pink bolts just shoot all over the place. And then I'll use my bonus action to shout over my shoulder to where Aradriel is and says, Oi, big man, you've got this! And I'm going to give Bardic Inspiration to Aradriel. Yes. Wait. Oh. Sorry, I don't need it. Keep him alive. <laughs> <laughs> and Aradriel, that brings it to you. I am not 100% sure how this is going to work. So I'm actually going to risk the attack of opportunity to step one back. And so two you attack that attack. Is, I'm aware of two of them. Okay. All right. All right. So one of them has a dirty 21. That's poor. I'm going to take that damage. hit. No, you're not. As so, so as a reaction, that is within 60 feet of me. I'm going to cast Silvery Barbs. He has to reroll. All right. Nice. Ooh. 11. There you go. Cool. And so not only has he now missed, I have advantage on my next attack. Awesome. Nice. You're welcome. Very nice. Excellent. And the second one, does he take the attack of opportunity? He does. With a seven to hit, so he will miss. There Excellent, go, friend. <laughs> and will then, because I still had my drum, raise it in the air, spin it around, and call forth the gods of thunder. And slam my hand drum one last time and cast Thunder Wave and upcast that bad boy to fourth level. They have a DC 15 check to make. Nice. Thunder Wave, does that affect your ally as well? Except it's a 15 foot cube, which I am going to place. Not, on, not centered on yourself, but going off of yourself towards the other two. That's why I stepped back so I could get both of them. Perfect. Uh, except that the range is self. Oh, it starts itself? Yeah. Correct. Oh, shoot. I missed that. Like it waves out from you. In that case, I will step forward again. I didn't realize that. Okay, you didn't need to step back. <laughs> you will ignore the move part. Oh, so it's 15 foot centered on me. Correct. Got it. Yeah. Wait, okay, and... so are we recounting that you didn't move, therefore there are no attacks of opportunity? You didn't cast a spell. Yeah, you can have your spell slot back. I'll let that recount. That's what I'm asking. Thank you. Appreciate All right. it. And then in that case, at 15 foot... That's this block like that, correct? It's 15 correct. feet from you in each direction, I think. Oh, no, it's a 15-foot cube. You're right. You're right. Yep. Okay. 
So in that case, that's what I'll do. They And they have their save. It's DC 15. Okay. And which save is it? It's Constitution. I've got a 15 and a dirty 20. That's the only Ouch. stat they have a decent bonus on. And I believe that is going to be save for half. Yeah. Good thing I upcast that because that is 5d8. Nice. That should still do it even if they failed. I succeeded rather. And 23 total. All right. So they're going to take 11 each. Because they both made it with the 15 yep. being the lower number? Yep. Yep. All right. A and B. 11. Okay. Any further actions? They are uh... both severely damaged, bloodied even. That is, I don't think I have any bonus actions at work here, but I'm going to look at that just in case. Oh, yes, I do have a bonus action. I will starlight step 30 feet away from the bad boys. <laughs> All right. So I will move here. No, I don't want to get that far away from her. I want to be able to. I want to be able to help them. Yeah, so I'm going to move to there. So not. Now I, I want to move so they can't reach me. So I will. I will definitely go to. Okay. Does that conclude your turn? And that concludes my turn. All right. Next is the Dulahan. Oh, damn it. I am so bad at running big monsters. Oh, well. <laughs> so the Dulahan wields his mighty axe in two hands and takes a mighty swing at you. For a 14, which will miss. That will miss. With a second attack, we'll get a 16. Still a miss. Nice. Arrgh! He hoots. And then it is the Flame Skull's turn. And he flies over here. And he drops a fireball. <laughs> on Eladriel. It's going to hit Zombie C. But it should get Selenuth. Nope, just behind Aladriel. It's going to miss. It's going to set it up to miss the Dulahan, obviously. But to do that, the edge of it's still going to catch D. So it's going to be C and D are both also going to take this fireball. But R, B, and A. Yeah, they are too. So he might kill all of his own zombies in the process, but he's doing it. Yeah, they're zombies. They recycle. So everyone will need a dexterity saving throw. Hey. But not when I roll that badly. That's a 24 for me. Ooh. Dex is... Ooh, I have high dex. That's nice. That is a dirty 20 for me. Okay. And a lot I rolled a total of an... I rolled a total of an 8. Ugh. Dang. Well, the, the damage is 23. You take all of it. Your compatriots take half. Yeah. And let's see how the zombies do. It, in the interest of full disclosure, that was a natural one. Oh! Then you will also have disadvantage on your next turn. <laughs> and good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we've both yeah. got ours out of the way. Uh, Skull, it's almost your turn. Yeah. Next, take it to the next yeah. one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fail. Okay, so all of the zombies, all of the zombies 
are incinerated to zero hit points. They get their con save to stay up. Did not work. That one stays up. That one stays up. Oh, one of them is fully incinerated. And it was a... The others take half, which may kill some of them. I haven't looked yet because uh, some of them are already injured. So B was also injured. So B is also dead. Oh, no, he failed. He, they all died because they failed their saving throw. This was their undead fortitude saving throw to come back with one hit point. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So they all look like hell. They started to fall down. They're even still somewhat on fire. <laughs> nice. That was Excellent. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he's kind of swirling in the branches of that tree for cover. And that will bring us back to the top for Selenoth. Cool. All right. So... I, so as everything is kind of swirling around, I will try to picture the, what's the name of the creature that we're facing? The Dalon? Dalon. 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 Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I just kind of like start focusing on him and I'm, I'm casting Rolothim's Psychic Lance, which is a fourth level enchantment spell. I'm unleashing a shimmering lance of psychic power from my forehead, basically going to run him through. I need, I'm calling his name on and the target must make an intelligence saving throw guessing an 11 misses an 11 certainly does miss so then i'm afraid he's gonna have to use one of his two legendary resistances and choose to succeed instead oh, okay that's fine it. that's fine i need to get myself some d6s though all right 76 worth of psychic damage. So that's 10, 24. So he takes 12. Okay. And is not incapacitated because he succeeded. But that's okay. I will let him burn his I will let him burn his legendary resistances. If he doesn't burn them, he'd die with them. Exactly. Yeah. Any further actions? Uh, that's though? my turn. Yep. Okay. Zombie A is dead. Zombie B. 5, 10. Moves up to chomp on and again. The Dulahan gestures furiously for Zombie D to step sideways, and it does. <laughs> yeah, because he wants to flank me. I didn't do it the first turn on purpose with that, as the because yeah. the zombie wasn't smart enough. But he commands them. So I've got three zombie attacks coming at y'all with advantage. Oof. Oh, wait. Rewind just a second. Before that happens, at the end of your turn, the Dulahan uses one of his legendary actions, and this is the part that I suck at. <laughs> is remembering to do that? Yep. And he uses Frightful Presence, which does cost him two actions, and each creature of his choice within 30 feet and succeed in a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or become frightened of him until the end of its his next turn. Ooh, this is not good. Yeah, that's 19. A, I failed. I, I didn't have my Bardic Inspiration. That's right. I used it. And Ladriel? I failed. All right. Then the two of you both have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while he is within your line of sight, and you cannot willingly move closer. Oof. Okay, that's fine. Fine. Then execute the move where the zombie staggers forward yeah. and chomps on some folk. So, first zombie attack we'll do on Selenoth. We've got a 30, 22. Cool, silvery barbs. Okay. The second roll is a 17. That will miss, and I now have advantage, which cancels my disadvantage. It does indeed. And see. And do we get to make that save again at the end of each turn, or? Let's. No, it's just until the end of his next turn. Okay, so we're only frightened until the end of his next turn. Okay. Correct. Okay. All right. C and D. C and B both attack Finnegan. Hey. 
know, right? <laughs> 16? That is not going to hit. All right. And 13. So they will both <laughs> hit you. <laughs> nice. And that brings us to Finnegan's turn. All right. All right. What are we going to What are we going to do here? What are we going to do? Ooh. I am going to think How is Selenoth looking? I've taken some damage, but I'm fine. Okay. In that case, let's see. Do we get two attacks? I'm trying yes. to remember. Okay. In that case, question for the DM. Could I use my inspiration to, as a bonus action, try to do an intimidation check on that little freaking floating skull? And your the goal of your intimidation? To frighten him? Yeah. And you're going to use your inspiration to do something? Yes, okay. so that I can I'll, still I'll have my... Try it. I will whirl around after I dodge these two attacks, and I'll whirl around and say, Oit! You! When I get you, I'm going to turn you into a spoon! And then I will turn <laughs> and stab at the zombies. The intimidation is a... Oh, what's 13 times 2? I can math. 26. And then... Wow. I have a plus 13 to intimidation. Very angry, tiny half. So he did really well, and but yeah, not anywhere near good enough for that. So he's definitely seems to be a little bit intimidated, like he cowers behind a branch for a minute. And he's gonna turn you into a spoon. You'll have to take care of my boss first, chicken. And then I will turn and try to attack these two zombies on either side of me. The first one is let's see, what is that to hit? A 16 to hit, a 16 will hit. And the second one is a 14 to hit. Also will hit. Okay. Are you attacking That's... the same one twice or each of them? Each of them. Okay. I'll turn and stab and I'll whirl in and stab at the other one. That is six damage on the first one and nine on the second. All right. They do not get to undead fortitude a second time. Ah! They are dead. Ah! Oh, and that is my full turn. Nice. And then as they as the zombies fall, I'll turn if I can see where the little skull is floating in the tree and just do a little... He is cowering behind a branch at the moment. I'm coming for him. All right. Aladria. Feeling not the slight bit of remorse for the kill I am about to swipe from Finnegan, <laughs> I will also use... Out land, and I will stow the I will stow the hand drum, and my hands will come together, spin twice, like this, and then start rotating in rapid fashion as I well up my psychic energy, and I will look directly at the cowering skull, and I will say, "My mind to your mind, you end this night." And he needs a save versus Rolatham psychic lance upcast to. fourth level and the save is dc 15 stat wisdom intelligence intelligence sorry and he has an eight so he fails and he'll take all 96 nine dice six for 42 psychic damage Ooh. dang <laughs> nicely done he explodes in shards of bone Hi. Finnegus goes, hey, that one is mine. And the Dulahan hoots in fury. Hold your tongue and your turn. You're next. <laughs> I'm not certain if you realize this, but he doesn't have a tongue. Yeah, he doesn't have a face. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I said what I said. Action. That is my turn. I can't move any closer to him, so I'm going to just hang here. And that brings it to the Dulahan's turn. And you definitely seem, actually, you know what? At the end of your turn. Because this is a new round for him. The Dulahan is going to use another of his legendary actions as you taunted him, Headhunt. And he moves up to his speed without provoking opportunity attacks. He makes one battle axe attack with advantage. 
You're not flanked anymore, so look. <laughs> <laughs> so he has a dirty 23 and a 19 sounds like a hit I'm going to mage armor on the 19 I'm going to mage armor anyway so it doesn't stop the larger one but it will stop the 19 oh no that was just the so advantage that was yeah. just advantage the 23 is the only one you don't need the mage armor Oh, on, on the upside he did not critical because um, if while headhunting... I'm going to do the mage armor anyway. No, I won't. I won't, because I can always do it later because I haven't used the reaction. Okay. And his damage? Uh, 34. Woo! Nice. <laughs> Had it critted, you would have lost your head and died. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was four. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Okay. Yay! Okay, so, and that will can now it's the Dulahan's turn because that was his legendary action. <laughs> Stupid legendary monsters. And then on his turn, he continues to hack at you with that battle axe. Well, that's four. First attack is a thirteen. That'll miss. Second attack, sixteen. Good armor. And so it'll miss. All right. Then he misses twice. <sighs> Flame Skull is dead. That brings us to Selenon. Cool. And to a new yep. round. Yep. I am going to do this. So Selenoth again points his sword at the Dulahan and begins encanting a spell as a like a shot of flame in the shape of a hand starts snaking out of his sword and wraps itself around his battle axe as he casts heat metal at 6th level so the selenath needs to make me a constitution saving throw So, effect of the saving throw, should he fail? He will take... So his axe begins to heat up, and he will take... What's it? So it starts at 2 at 2nd level, I'm casting it at 6, so it would be 6d8 worth of damage. And if he succeeds? Creature must succeed on a constitution saving throw, drop the object. So, if he succeeds, he doesn't take the damage. However, if he doesn't drop the object it has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until the start of my next turn. And I can take a bonus action to renew that effect. That's hot. Okay. Literally. Yeah, it literally, literally. Hot. It's literally hot. Yeah. Okay. He will choose to succeed on his constitution saving throw in this That's round, burning totally his secondary, <coughs> secondary resistance. Yep. That's fine because it's still a hot axe. That's a full Did action he take for me. Damage so at this point? If he succeeds on the uh, if he succeeds on the check, he does not take damage. Okay. But he is at if the target doesn't drop the object, it has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until the start of my next turn. Nice. Understood. Have you concluded your turn? That is my turn. I'm not scared about the zombie in front of me. You're not what? I'm not scared about the zombie in front of me. What? He could eat you alive. He certainly could. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the conclusion of your turn, the Dulahan uses all, because he got all of his legendary actions back at the start of his turn after he used his last one, uses all three of them again for the Headless Hunt and comes back to you. Ooh, okay. His advantage and your disadvantage will cancel out, though, so you'll only get a single. Or you'll just get the non-nasty roll. Where is the axe? Where is the axe? For a dirty 20. Silver barbs. Roll it again. I've been struggling not to... Uh, I won't, though. I'll wait till the end. Oh, actually, shit, no, because heat metal is a full action. Silvery Barbs is not a cantrip. You cannot. I cannot. I will take it. 23 points of damage. I thought this was on his turn, so it's a whole different turn. 
So Tonga Shell was legendary actions back at the start of his turn. Oh, and actually, and Sylvia Barbers is a reaction. Yeah. Oh, if it's a reaction, then you've already used it for this round. Or for, yeah. So here's the way that Sylvia Barbers is written. I can only get the benefit of one, one ballot of Silvery Barbs, but it doesn't say that I can only, and actually it was last turn because I used it on him also last turn. So it was definitely last round when I used it. My question is whether or not I can use a reaction spell and an action spell in the same round. Yes. Okay, cool. Then yeah, I can use Silvery Barbs. Your reaction is separate from your action. Yep, cool. All right. Yep. Then Silvery Barbs, he has to reroll his 20. Twenty-five. Okay, so it's still a twenty. Okay, yep. fine. That's fine. I still have advantage next next time I attack. So, do you remember what the previous damage roll was? Because I had already cleared it. Twenty-three. Okay, good. Because my reroll was thirty-four. You can take twenty-three. Ooh, instead. I'll take the twenty-three, please. Yeah. yeah. I am not quite bloodied, but that was a significant hit. Yeah. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's not nice and then that zombie hits you or tries to yep. he has advantage he does er, oh that's the wrong guy no the zombie doesn't get to roll with the duel of Hans dice <laughs> that's a significantly different attack bonus so we've got a 17 and a dirty 21 that'll hit if I get laid out by that or, zombie, or is... damage as he tries to stuff any part of you that he can into his mouth. <laughs> All right, now nom, I'm nom, 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 nom. and shenanigans slash Finnegan. Yes, ah! <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> I'm going to run up behind this zombie, do a little roll, and take a nice swipe at his butt cheeks. Um, At advantage. What's left, what's left of like... them? And advantage. It's a good thing because one of those was a one. Nice. Um, You're welcome. That <laughs> is a eighteen to hit. That will hit. All right. He's going to take <laughs> roll the one. He's going to take five points of piercing damage to the buttocks. And how's he looking, by the way? He only had one hit point left. Ha! <laughs> Sweet. And he is no more. As he topples, I will step up and put a hand on Selenoth's back and just have this little kind of pink light comes out from my fingertips and says, Shenanigans are here! We're good! We're good! And I'm going to upcast Cure Wounds at 4th level. Nice. So that is going to be... Actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and do it at 5th level. Why not? So that's going to be 5d... 5d... 5d8. 5d8. One six. Twenty four plus five. Twenty nine hit points back. That is oh. a lovely thing. Just because yeah. I and I hate to be this person, but can you do the attack and the spell in the same round? If I have two attacks and I only cast one spell, I know you can't cast two spells, okay. Fair but enough. you can melee and spell okay. in the same round. Yeah. If cool. the spell is a bonus action. Which, for me, I have Vampiric Touch is, Eldritch Blast is, and Cure Wounds and Lesser Restoration all are. Okay. Oh, that's a subclass feature. Excellent. That's a nice touch. I, that is beautiful. I did not know this. I was originally going to go with a different one of the colleges, but this one, the College of Lore, you get to learn some of the spells from other classes and have access yeah. to them at whatever version that is, which is nice. Nice. So, yeah, that is my full turn. Cool. Okay. Nice. And that is much it. nicer than and cooler than I could do. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to... To Aradrio. Yeah, I'm going to do a similar action, but not nearly as cool. I am going to up to level on myself, because I'm hurting. <laughs> Sorry, Luanika, would you say that again? Because your audio broke up for just a second, so... I said, 
I'm going to do the same thing, but less cool. I'm going to I'm going to cast Cure Wounds upcast to sixth level. Nice. All right. On myself. <laughs> and I'm going to add 32 hit points to my meager four hit points that I had left. Whoa, or six, six hit points that I had left. Six? I had, yeah, you oh, had, boy, me, you had, had me shift it back. <laughs> yeah, you had me out, you, literally on the ropes. I was like, ah! <laughs> like Mage Armor literally saved my life. Saved my life. Help! <laughs> so with that, I am healed anew. I am no longer bloodied, and I will maneuver. I'll go here behind some kind of cover. Nice. And then would I be able to try to hide in this position? Do you have a full action left to hide with? Hide is a action. full action unless you can do it as a bonus nope. action as a thief. Nope, I don't. And I'm just going to crouch and hope that this tombstone will give me some kind of AC bonus if he decides to come after my ass. <laughs> All right. And that's the end of your turn? It is. Which brings us to his turn, at which point he does get back all of his legendary actions. And he takes a two-handed swing at Selenoth. You know what? Why don't I just use this page for him? Haha. -ha. Now I don't have to shift in the initiative count. And he's at disadvantage. He is. So you won't have to worry about the 23. But the second roll was also a 23. Oh, a 23 will hit. And that's a two-handed swing. So you take 12. And... Oh, shit, that's not on head. And that's whenever he hits with a battle axe. So you don't have to worry about the other, but you do take the necrotic damage. You also take 2d10 necrotic hmm. for 10 more, which I forgot Energy. to apply to his axe earlier. <laughs> Doesn't count on the headless hunt though. And I think he's missed you every time before that. So that's his first yeah. regular battle lax hit. The headless yeah, hunt yeah. is separate damage and yeah. it's all necrotic. Yeah, nice. Cool. Okay. And following the Dulahan's turn, does he have any bonus actions? He doesn't have any good bonus actions. That will bring us back to the top of the round. All right. Cool. So first things first, as a bonus action, I am reactivating, I'm renewing Heat Metal. I wonder if he gets the saving throw again. Is that a concentration spell? It is a concentration spell. So I need to make my concentration check, actually, before... What's the, I took 22 damage, so my concentration save is 11? Is it half? Yep. Yeah. I believe so. It's either 10 or half the damage, whichever is higher. Yep. All right. So it's 19 on the concentration save, so that's fine. Cool. Okay. So he needs to make me a consultation. A consultation. Constitution. He needs to make me a consultation save. And that's... <clears throat> the doctor is in. What was that? 15. Ah, meets beats. Oh, okay. Cool. So he doesn't take the damage, which is fine. I will merely attack him with my longsword, and I do get advantage because of silvery barbs last time. Mm -hmm. That'll be a 22 to hit. That will the first one. indeed hit. Okay. Second attack will miss. So D8 plus 2 slashing for 7 points. 7? Yeah, so that's bonus action, action, yeah. He pauses for a moment and goes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and is that the end of your turn, sir? That's the end of my turn, yep. 
Okay, so he will once again use his three actions for headhunting and zoom back down here after himself some barred heads. And on Eladriel, he will make a battle axe attack at would be at advantage because of the ability, but he's at disadvantage because of heat metal, so it'll be a straight roll. 21. Silvery Barbs. Silvery Barbs, a cantrip or a first level spell? It's a reaction. It's a first level spell. Okay. Yep. I, and I have not cast a spell this turn. So. No, no, that, that's cool. Just wondering if it would ever, if it would run out when you run out of first level spells, or if it would keep. It, it does. This is in fact my last first level spell slot, and you can't upcast it. So my reroll is a twenty-seven. You have to lower one. So, yeah. You said twenty-one. Twenty-seven. No, well, right. You, you you take the lower of the two though with silvery barbs. Oh, and, oh, oh, okay. And the original one was twenty-one. Correct. So okay. major armor is not going to help me. Because that will only get me to 21, which beats it, beats it. Your attack? 32. Woo! Dang. I remain. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I exist! <laughs> uh, all right. This is like bobbing for hit point. That brings it back to Finnegan. <laughs> all right. I, mm, uh, huh, let's see. How's Eradriel looking? I'm bad. I can... My worst? I'm actually it, it, identically it. He took away every hit point I just got back. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay. I will peek around where the Dulahan is and I'll use my fingers to draw a little like heart shape and there'll be this purple pink light that just emerges and I'll flick it and this little neon pink heart is going to fly over and hit you. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on you at not 5th level spell. So I'm going to cast that 4th level. Do, 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 do. Gotta do these guys. Let's see. It's a Two. Eight, nine, yeah, you're all partial healers. Yep. That is 15 plus 5. So that is 20 hit points that you get back. And I'm going to move down a little bit so that the Dulan is between all three of us. And then once I'm sure that Eradriel's got my little heart thing will explode when it hits him. And then I'll look back at the Dulan from where I'm saying I'll just look at him and go, when this is over, your axe is mine. And that's going to be my full turn. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of clutches it possessively. But wince is a little bit at the same time, though you can't really see the wince. Mm. Okay, and following you, we have Eladriel. Not dead yet. <laughs> not not dead, happy. dead yet. But I feel it is I take advantage of positioning that I have. So... I'm hoping this doesn't end up being a bad choice. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cast Rivalthem Psychic Lance. I'm going to upcast that to fifth level. I'm going to I'm going to stay in my crouch position, step up to one knee, and again my hands are going to pivot like this, building up my psychic energy nice. and I'm going to look at where his head should be and I'm going to say it is time we bring this to an end. All of us, crowd, attack him. 
no! And fire the uh, the lance directly at his heart with my psychic lance at his heart. For whatever reason, uh, my psychic energy affects his heart because he's got no head. And <laughs> uh, that's a intelligence save. Whew. Whew, he rolled a one. <gasps> nice. 96 psychic coming right at you. Double. That's a crit because he rolled a one. So it's 25 on the first roll. And 30 on the second. So is that 55 total points of damage? 55 psychic damage. Nice. That is the first palpable hit against him. <laughs> I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> I was hoping it would be that was the last palpable hit against him. No, he had been reduced from 135 to 104 when you hit him with that. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, so he's bloodied. <laughs> he is definitely bloodied. He staggers a bit. Oh. That is so not good for me. So I just want to double check that the guy without a head isn't immune or resistant to psychic damage. He's not. I double checked. He is cool. resistant to lightning. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what he's resistant to, but he is not resistant or psychic. immune to cool. psychic damage. All right, cool. Just making sure. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> yep. Cool. I was afraid that was how I was going to find out. But <laughs> that, that's my biggest damage dealer. All right, and, and that and is my mo my movement. I got nothing right now. I'm just hoping somebody does something before he tees off on me again. Yeah. Next, it's his turn. Yeah, apparently, yeah, uh, that was <laughs> that apparently a hope without a a hope without action. merit. <laughs> he is at disadvantage because he does not have advantage to hit you this time. So let's see what that does to us. Hang on, there might be a secondary effect on the second lance. He is incapacitated into the next turn, which means everybody has advantage on him. Nice. Ooh, which means he can't attack you. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shoot, given that, I could have ran away. <laughs> <laughs> can I do that, Glenn? You absolutely can. He is just sitting there. He staggered, and he's just swaying for a minute as your psychic energy crackles around his chest. Almost like binding chains. <laughs> and uh, he stands there on his incapacitated turn because on when he's incapacitated, he can not take actions or reactions. Nice. Yeah, I'm just going to go to here. I can't. I'm not going to get too far away from the combat. Oof. All right. So after that, it'll come back to the top of the round for selling off. Awesome. I am going to use my bonus action to make him make his heat metal save. Let's find Constitution out. save. Con save. Which, how does him being Woo -hoo! Tested affect that? What's mm. that? Dang. All right. He fine. does have a plus three con. <laughs> wow. He rolled a, damn. Okay. But yeah, he rolled plus, a 19. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. I will. Let's see. I kind of hope that you would stay near him, Aladriel, because I was going to use Wither and Bloom to go ahead and get you some hit points, but I guess in the meantime, I will just move up and attack him. At advantage. At double advantage, because I had Silver Bar. That is a 23 on the first hit. That'll hit. And thank God for um, advantage. A 14 on the second, which I was going to miss. Is a hit on incapacitated fellow critical an auto crit? No. Not according to the condition. Okay. I was asking. I didn't. That's paralyzed. Yeah. Unconscious, okay. maybe. Yeah. But it is yeah. not on incapacitated. Oh. He takes nine points of slashing damage. He is and... bleeding heavily. And that is my turn. Okay. And again. All right. All right. All right. All right. I am going to. I'm going to stay where I am and I'll eye up the Dulhan. How's he looking, by the way? Oh, he looks pretty rough. Okay. All right. And I'll kind of look him up and down and then I'll 
stick out three fingers and kind of flick them, and I'm going to have an Eldritch Blast come out of each one. Nice. That'll be... It's a... And they're at advantage. Oh, dang. Okay, and that's... I got a 20 on that one. Sweet! Thank you for advantage. So that's 20 on the first one. That's... Oh, gosh. 26, I think, on the second one. 20 was a nat 20 on the first one. All of that one. A 29, yeah. 26 on the second one, and then... It's a good thing I have advantage, because I rolled a 2 and a 3. So that is a 12 on the last one. The last one will miss. Okay. Double the first one, however. Or the one okay. that was a natural 20, of course. Gotcha. Double. Double the first one, and then the first one is going to be 6 force damage. And then the second one is going to be 5 force damage. And the third one will just miss him, go over his shoulder, and just sort of fizz and dissipate. For the first one that was doubled, don't roll the dice twice. The first roll of the dice, max it, and then roll the die. Okay. Oh, are we doing max damage on that? Or... So, what the normal damage dice are what? It's a d8. No, sorry, okay. d10. A d10. So you yeah. would get 10 for the crit, okay. and then roll the d10 and add it to it. And That's... that was a 2, so that would have been 12 on the first one in that case. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that would be an additional... I think it would have been 6 more. 6 more. Yeah. That way you can never roll less than your normal damage on a crit, because why should you? I gotcha. And my Eldritch Bash, they look a little bit like hot pink fireworks. They fizz and spin, and they make this fizzy noise when they go off. And they're so hot <laughs> pink, I, yeah. of course. Excellent. Um, I love that sound. That will be my like full Gandalf the Fabulous. <laughs> yes. That will be my <laughs> full turn. I'm going to stay where I am. All right. Aradriel. I am. I can't guarantee he's going to. I am not sure about this creature's ability to to be successful with the lance a second time. Instead of healing, I'm going to move back to this position. So, well, I'm already at advantage. So I don't have to get on that side of him. I'm going to get right here, and I am going to attack with my rapier. I have advantage. And I will be utilizing my College of Whispers feature, Psychic Blades. Nice. And what that will do is, if I am successful in attacking, I will be able to add 5d6 psychic damage to the target from Ooh. my Psychic Blade. Damn. Which is fairly similar to what my lance would have done anyway. I Actually, just... sorry, Luminica, you no longer have advantage because he his incapacitation ends at the start of your turn. In that case, I will go to the flanking position. I was looking up the spell right now to try to figure yep. out if it was at the start or the end of his turn. Yep. 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 <laughs> Good call. Thank you. Good catch. Yep. That's why we're here. Now, some things are at the beginning. Some things are at the end. It's hard to yeah. track of. <laughs> it is. It's hard. Yeah. So that's going to be a fourteen hit. That will miss. Eek! That's bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think he goes after you. Well, he's not going to go after him at the as at the end of your turn before his begins. Since he's no longer incapacitated, he's going to use his legendary action to hunt the head of the guy who bound him up with his lance. Ooh. And it would be uh -oh. advantage, but it's disadvantage because of heat metal. Will a 17 hit you? 17 will not hit me once I do uh, armor. Uh, damn. Mage armor or shield? Yeah, ma mage armor is not a reaction, I don't think. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah, 17 will hit me. For 23. And yet you remain. And yet I remain. I abide. <laughs> now what is his no! He regains all of his legendary actions. <laughs> but he's at disadvantage on this one as he swings at you again. 
12. A 12 will not hit me. And a second attack, again at disadvantage. We've got a 21 or a 24. He will hit. For 11. And I am out. Don't. <laughs> but it comes out as as Seyfeld falls, not Seyfeld, Eladriel falls to the ground. All right. And that concludes this turn and brings it to Selena. Okay, cool. Bonus action. Yeah, I need a constitution save. All right, constitution save. Come on. The 15 plus 3 is 18. Oh, come on. All right, cool. So I am going to... But you've probably significantly reduced damage with the disadvantage on the swings. That's exactly. Okay. You know what? Raum's Sacred Lance has been pretty effective. So I'm not sure if it's because he's just not that smart or what. But I will, having seen the success of, of my friend there before he died, I will also cast Raum's Psychic Lance. I will cast it at fifth level. So I need an intelligence save. To be fair, Eladriel's chest is still rising and falling. Yep. So he's not like dead. He's just he rolled a two. Cool. Hey. So he failed. So he failed. So that is 8d6, and he's incapacitated. So let's see. I don't have 8d6 on me, but that's okay. Let's see. I'll we'll use the handy dandy dice roller here. Let's see. I think maybe. No, that's not what I wanted. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's see. Just thinking about it. All right. So that's okay. So that's 10, 21, 21 points of damage. He reels and staggers backwards. But does not fall. Oh. He is teetering with two hit points. <laughs> oh, come on. Is there anything else that I can do? I've used my bonus action. I've used my spell. I used my all right. Fine. My turn is done. <laughs> and he's incapacitated, so he can't use any of his legendary actions again. That's uh, no, that, that's yeah. a very that's a very effective thing y'all have been doing a lot. It's a now. very oh. effective spell. Then again. All right. I still and us got his thing going on with the dual hand, so I will have been paying a little bit more attention to where Roger fell. I'm going to run up and slide home base style into the dirt next to him and conjure <laughs> up some sort of pink purple sparks in my hand to go, Don't you quit on me now! And I'm going to hit him in the chest <laughs> like I'm trying to defibrillate him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to cast your wounds at fourth level. Just come on, just, just whack him in the You're chest. You're not dying on me today. Love it. <laughs> Don't you die on me today? Oh goodness! All right, so that's for the eight. Uh, Fifteen. That is eighteen plus five. Twenty-three hit points back for Radriel, and that will be my full turn. Once I'm sufficiently satisfied that he's alive, I'll stop defibrillating him. <laughs> Clear! <laughs> Clear! <laughs> Rodrigo, as you, your life flashes before your eyes briefly, you wake up from a dirt nap and you're like, still kind of lying there, but feeling surprisingly good for a get dead guy. Not digging this at all. I actually am going to go with what I know best and I'm going to... Stick with the spell that seemed to have been most effective. I'm going to go with Rotham's Psychic Lance. And I am going to upcast to fourth level. No, I'm sorry. Throw, is it? I apologize. Upcast to fifth level. Intelligence saving throw, 15. And he rolled a 15 on a plus. So he'll check. take half damage, which is uh, 8 and 6. 
She'll take half of 28 points of psychic damage. All right, so he'll take 14 damage to his two hit points. Yes. <laughs> and the way that this goes down is the psychic lance hits him right in the chest as before, and the lightning, purple lightning of your psychic energy is crackling around his chest, binding him in place as he staggers, falls to one knee with the holding the haft of his axe as the blade hits the ground, and he half holds himself up. And his neck starts convulsing. And w first weird bits of flesh and blood and goop and matter start spurting out of it. And then occasional loud hoot, hoots. And then with a noise. And then a noise and a noise. Three death's heads <laughs> pop out of his neck hole. Give it to you. Oh, that's not good. And with a mighty hoot, he rises back to his feet. No. Dang. No. Oh, that's fabulously bad. <laughs> Dang. Is he still incapacitated from mine, though? Until the part of your first turn, but he yeah. can't help this. It yeah, automatically yeah. happens. Is... <laughs> If he's reduced to zero hit points and doesn't die or fall unconscious once a day. Yep. Or no, it recharges after a short or long rest. Oh, that's, Instead, yeah. he spits out three death heads and stands back up. Yep. Oh. <laughs> How many hit points? One of each type. Regain? So there is a petrifying bite, a mind bending bite, and a gnashing bite, death head, oh. swirling around you. Oh, jeez. Okay. Excuse me. How's the Dulahan looking after this? He's definitely, it's not like all of his wounds have closed, but a lot of them did. Dang. <laughs> That's poor. Could oh, we, man. Could we I take we two minutes out of this one. <laughs> could we take two minutes uh, so I can run to the restroom real quick? Absolutely. Run to the restroom. Yeah, I know this right. one's running a little long because I put the bard battle at the front of it. Yeah. But hey, you got to have a good bard battle, right? Y'all were playing bards. How could yeah, I? Yeah, exactly. And I knew that Lee Wanika would be all about the devil went down to Georgia motif. Oh, I guess I didn't have to hurry back. Oh, they decided they apparently needed to run as well. All right, I'm going to get, I'm get another beer then. And you're still back first. <laughs> what a fabulous monster to pick, Glenn. This is amazing. Thank you. What better for Halloween class warfare? Totally, yeah. Absolutely. Now, to be fair, the second stage of the Dulahan definitely counts as additional experience if you defeat it in its secondary state. Yeah. So this whole bonus round is beyond the original. We've already beaten the deadly encounter. But normally when monsters have features like that, they don't list additional experience for it. But this one does. If it happens, then you give yeah. and, and they beat it, you give them additional experience. So nice. Now he gets mythic actions. But yeah, all the other monsters were just window dressing whackables. Sure. Flame skull. Yeah. It was an annoying gnat. Yeah. I didn't expect it to get blown up in one shot. I was hoping it would be able to get a full flaming spear out to roll around in the middle of the combat for a while, too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. These skulls, though, don't look nearly as intimidating as that one did. There's no right. flame. They're just floating. I guess since they came right out of him, they'd all be within spaces around him. So while we were waiting, I was just double checking to make sure that I'm that I was playing on heat metal correctly. And the question, he, as long as he continues to hold his axe, he mm -hmm. continues to get the saving throw to keep from getting damaged. But the disadvantage is automatic. The disadvantage is the effect of the concentration spell. So 
I just wanted to double check and make sure that was like that he definitely got the disadvantage. Yeah, because there's separate effects. There's the damage which he gets the save against, but the disadvantage is the effect of the spell. Nope, that's cool. Makes good sense too. I'm pleased he's held onto it for as long as he had before yeah. after invent a longsword that he had his belt that wasn't there before that he's gonna draw. Before he draws his longsword. Yeah. But the long short's not as cool as sure, yeah. That <laughs> that that is pretty cool. <laughs> I love how you prepared a map <laughs> for it. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> great great visual. use of the tool, my friend. Great use of the tool. <laughs> I almost went with Gene Simmons's axe guitar. Yeah. But I definitely didn't want to rights infringe yeah. that. I did obtain that picture of the axe legally. Nice. Nice. All right. Where are we? We are in a graveyard. <laughs> right. Getting our asses handed to us. <laughs> <laughs> talking Almost about your girl still alive. Yeah. I think, I think, yeah. was it, fin oh, you just psychic glanced him, Rodriel, and then yep. you dropped him and now he's back, but he's still, he is still incapacitated until the beginning of my turn. So, right, so now it is he's his actually, turn and he does he's nothing. He's incapacitated to the to my turn next. No, because he succeeded on your save. He failed. Oh, save. that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But the three skulls that just appeared are not incapacitated, and they take their action right after him on the same turn. Cool. <gasps> that's poor. So the death's heads all take a chomp. And I put them out randomly, so let's see. Looks like Selenoth gets the G, which is the ganashing one. And it takes a chomping bite. It flies by you. Chomp for a 15? No. Right, that will miss. And the M is the mind bending one, goes for Finnegan. All right. With a 16. That is going to miss. Okay. Barely. And then the P, which is the petrifying bite head, bites for Finnegan. Oi, right, what is it with you all? Go pick on someone else. And he only rolls a six, so he is also ah. going to miss. Flame skull is dead. Selenoth. Cool. In my math, a 10 foot radius sphere gets everybody. Yep. Right? Yes. Yeah, centered on me. Cool. All right. So, first things first, on my incapacitated friend there, he's now no longer incapacitated. But as a bonus action, I am going to make him take the. Damage for heat metal. He needs to make me a constitution save, DC 15. And 14 fail plus at this 3, 17. Oh, come on. Fine. I am also, so as my action this turn, I am going to cast Wither and Bloom. I'm going to upcast it to fifth level. So Wither and Bloom, invoke both death and life in a 10 foot radius sphere centered on a point within range. That point will be me. Yeah, that point will be me. That's fine. Because everything's within 10 feet of me. Each creature of my choice in that area must make a constitution saving throw taking let's see, it's second level. So 5d6 necrotic damage on a failed save. So I need a constitution save from the three death heads and the dude. The Dulahan gets a 14. That's a failure. Nice. One death's head has a the gnashing. I'll go in the same order as the attacks. The gnashing has a 20. Succeeds. The mind bending has a 9. Failure. And the petrifying bite has a 13. Cool. So the only one that succeeded is the gnashing one. So he will get half the damage. Okay. And I upcast it, like I said, to 5th level. You did. And so 5th, let's see, it's 2d6. It's a 2nd level spell, so it does 5d6. So... Let's see. How do I? No, I don't, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's 20 points of damage to everybody who failed the save and 10 points of damage to the gnashing. And in addition, one creature of my choice in the area can spend any one of its unspent hit dice and regain a number of hit points equal to the roll plus my spellcasting ability modifier. So, Eradriel, you can spend unspent hit dice to regain hit points. You would gain however much you roll plus seven. Nice. And okay. how much damage was it? 20? 20. Okay. So the gnashing head is the only one that survives, the one that succeeded on the save. The other two shatter into dust right there in the air. Uh -huh. Cool. Nice. 
right. that makes my next action a lot easier to figure out. And did you regain your health? I'm about to. Yeah. My Pump hit it up, points. Roger. I'm about to. I'm about Hang to. Because to. that's what he was dead to do. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Please tell me that's not a reference that's too old for you, Scald. That's. No, that is. Like, do you remember, do you remember crisscross? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're good. So... You're in the clear. <laughs> Max. For a minute there. Got eight eight points on the die. Nice. Uh, so, close, you rega- so you're getting fifteen. Yep. 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 Plus seven. I actually think can roll one of its unspent hit dice. Okay. Never mind. I, I thought you could roll re roll uh, re roll more than that, but nope. So fifteen points for you. Okay. At the end of your turn. That is the end of my turn. That's my bonus action and my action. Yeah. Okay. Now that the uh, Han is in his headless summoning mode, he has extra actions available to him oh, as legendaries called Mythic. So <laughs> on this round at the end of your turn, he lets out this horrible wail from his neck stump. This is where I got the whole idea of the hooting was from this ability. Headless whale costs two actions. An echoing shriek issues from the headless stump. <laughs> Each creature of the Dulahan's choice within 10 feet of it, all of you, must make a <laughs> DC 15 wisdom saving throw. Hey. Is this against That's being frightened? Tr- it is not. It's against okay. psychic damage. It's a natural 20 for me. It's a 19. Nice. nice. It's a nine. Oh. <laughs> Man, uh, Leonica, we're doing everything we can to keep you alive. Right <laughs> Aradriel's, Aradriel's having a rough night. All right, so Aladriel take Aladriel takes fifteen. You each take seven. Okay. Okay. Psychic damage, and only one person failed, so the dual Han only gains ten temporary hit points. Oh. He doesn't need to be gaining hit points. Yeah. No, thank you. It, that's is it there now? It's there. Fantastic. Okay. And that's his that, and that will bring us to Finnegan. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I am going to scowl at this guy and I will hold up my hand, do the three fingers, and I'm going to Eldritch Blast at him and the Death's Head, but before I do, I'm going to say, Oi! Why'd the Dulahan lose every race? Because he can't get ahead! And then, <laughs> <laughs> Shoot him with the, with the Eldritch Blast. That's going to be two at the, the Dulahan and one at the surviving Death's Head. Okay. That's plus, is that plus nine to hit? I think so. so that's a 22 to hit on the first one for the Dulahan. That's a 17 on the second one. Both will hit. Cool. That is that is the wrong base. That's a D8. I need a D10. So that's nine, 16 force damage as my little pink fireworks just <laughs> and hit him. And then the last one's going for that surviving death's head. And that is a 17 to hit. That will hit. And that will be... <laughs> a whopping three points of force damage is it? Yeah, it's still alive, but he's ah. missing like half of a cheekbone and part of his jaw. I'm going to turn you into a spoon now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that is my full turn. All right. At the end of your turn, Adula Han uses coordinated attack and makes a battle axe attack and one death's head attack with a reaction. So he will attack. Radriel and the Death's Head will attack Selenoth. Axe. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's not like Headless Hunt where you're, it's, okay, he's still at disadvantage. You rolled a nat 20, which would remove your head, but he's at disadvantage, so I have to roll again. Why is he at disadvantage? Because of heat metal on the axe. Ah, yes, he is. 
with the headless hunt ability, that attack's made with advantage, so they cancel out. I was worried yeah. that was the case with this one too, but it is mm. not roll a second natural twenty. I rolled a dirty twenty-two. That's gonna hit me. So he's probably dead, but he's not headless. <laughs> Dang. He'd be in death saves this way. If he loses his head, there's no death saves. He's just dead. Dang. For fourteen slashing and ten necrotic. Oh. <laughs> no. uh, I'm sorry, man. If he keeps you down, you can't keep hitting him. He's not an unintelligent bad guy. I get it. <laughs> I, I actually did yeah. throw out some pretty good damage here. I was so just saying, yeah. Really yeah. Thrashed him. And that brings us to Finnegan's turn. All right. Oh, man, okay, I see Eradrio go down again. I'm like, damn it! <laughs> Stay up, man! <laughs> I will run up, and this time I'll one-handed defibrillate him. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds, this time at third level, because that's all I got left. So that is going to be... 4, 7, 15 plus 5, so 20 points, hit points back for Eradrio. And then I'll scowl up at the horse and we're say, well, that attack was poorly executed. And then that'll be my full turn. I'll just kind of pull a face <laughs> at him. Nice. <laughs> Rodrio, like a yo yo, you find yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and he's down. And he's up. And he's down. He's not even getting up anymore. He's just fighting from the ground. <laughs> He's just gonna lay. Just like guys. Just, <laughs> no, I'm not fighting from this advantage. Uh, um, when, when he was up, when he was down, he was down. When he was up. not liking this at all, I am going to go ahead and simply strike the dual monk. I've got advantage on that attack because of flanking. Yeah. That's a twenty-six to hit. I am using my Bardic Inspiration for this to do my Psychic Blades one more time. So I'll do my regular damage and then my... The Psychic Blades. Point. Yeah. So it's six on the regular piercing damage. Okay. And then for Psychic Blades, I'll take another Bardic Inspiration. And that's going to be 5d6. Eighteen points of damage. Yeah, he definitely is re-bloodied. Will <laughs> somebody please finish him? <laughs> And I will maintain my position so that Elmouth still has advantage. Okay. That is my turn. All right, that makes it the Dulahan's turn. He regains his spent legendary actions and turns his attention after he dropped you. The last time he just turned his back on you, by the way, and went right back after Selenoth and doesn't turn back again. And he's throwing it all at him. So at disadvantage, first battle axe attack is a 16 or a 16. So a 16, which will miss, right? That's correct. And the second attack is a not 20 or a 19. 19 will hit, but at least it's not a critical. So six regular damage and... <sighs> Only two necrotic. Critical fail on the necrotic damage. Whew. That was lame. And then the gnashing head chomps at you as well. 19. That'll hit. Four, four regular damage and one necrotic. Oh, wrong one. He does not get that. This is the gnashing one. So four and four necrotic. It's a different die roll though okay so eight so eight total yeah 
right. And that brings us back to, to you, Selena. Okay. So Get bonus him. action. I'm going to make him wait, but yeah. Bonus action, make him take his damage from the heat axe. Big money, big money, no whammies. Ooh, not 20. Oh, I also need to make my concentration save, actually, before we do that. Huh? So how much? So it was what? It was eight. It was eight, so only ten. Okay. But you got hit twice, so you have two saves to make. Once from him and yeah. once from the... That's, I fail. So heat metal drops. Woohoo! That's bad That's, for us. That's bad. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I get my bonus action back, which is good. So I know that heat metal dropped, right? Like I would yeah, know that you lost your concentration yeah. on the spell. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Uh, it's going back up. <laughs> so I'm casting it at fourth level. <laughs> Is that that has been a really big deal? That was important. So, we kind of need it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. We we, we need him not hitting us. Yeah. So you said that the con save was twenty two. Yeah, he just rolled. He rolled a twenty two. Okay. That's fine. The damage would be nice at this point, but honestly, the benefit of giving him constant disadvantage is much better. <laughs> yeah, he's gotten two nat 20s that would have beheaded folk. Yeah. That's scary. Uh, so yeah, so heat metal's back up, and that is my turn. Okay, at the end of your turn, oh. the Dulahan lets out his headless whale again. <laughs> For a 15 wisdom save, please. Everybody? Everybody within 10 feet of him. Oh, man. All right. That is an 18. That's an 18 for me also. 17. Right. So everybody takes half, and he gets no temporary hit points. Half of 24 is 12. Jesus. I'm looking Come at on! <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Come, Come on, on, man. That doesn't drop you again. No, it does not, but it's not far off. <laughs> Neither of us are looking very good. Like I, I chose to go ahead and put heat metal on that instead of instead of doing Wither and Bloom, and I really could use those hit points. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like holding my spleen over here. And now it is Finnegan's turn. Oh gosh. Oh jeez. Guys, I'll do my little thing where I draw a little heart and I'm gonna flick it towards Selenoth. That's gonna be cure wounds at Third level again, because that's all I've got left. Yep. And that is four. And four is four. Twelve plus five is seventeen hit points back to sell enough. And then as a bonus action, I am going to I'll give Bardic Inspiration. Thank you. And that'll be my full turn. Okay. All right. Yeah, say, you got this, fish man. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> At the uh, end of your turn, one legendary action left. The Dulahan will turn and make a single weapon attack against Finnegan. No! <laughs> uh oh. Because he's in because of all of that healing that's being thrown out. All right. 24 or, because we're at disadvantage again, 11. And the 11, I'm sure, will miss you. Yes. I duck under the axe and it takes a few of my hairs off and I just go, whoo-hoo, a little <laughs> off the top. <laughs> tiny bucket's a little tinier. <laughs> and Rodriel. Oh, wait, no. Um, yeah, that was the end of your turn. At this point, I have... Think maybe say yeah, uh, that just lets me know where it is. So I am going to cast Ralphim Psychic Lance <laughs> at its normal level, which is fourth level, my last fourth level spell. And at him and say, pour it on, sell it off. We're nearing the end. Are we? Are we? Re are we really? He rolls a five on his intelligence save. That's nice. That's uh, nice. That's very fortunate. 76 coming your way. And he's incapacitated. 
And he's incapacitated. And he's incapacitated. That's the bigger deal. <laughs> 27 psychic damage. That removes more than half of his remaining hit points. <sighs> Finish him! Nice. As your lightning circles his chest and chains once again, your psychic crackling, sorry, lightning, but crackling energy. Any further actions? I'm going to maintain my position. Actually, he's incapacitated. Advantage is already granted. As soon as he moves, he's going to headhunt me anyway, but I'm... I'm going to move just to make sure that head doesn't decide to come get me. <laughs> no, because he'll just fireball me. No. You will note that this one does not have fire floating around its head. This is nowhere near the... does not feel anywhere near as threatening as the flaming skull from earlier. I.e. he can't cast fireball. You don't know that, but I probably should have told you. <laughs> oh, I know. I am going to bonus action with my racial ability. And... Action, bonus action. I am going to Starlight Step, and I'm going to go 30 feet away. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Run away! Wait, now what did you do right before you ran away? I starlight. Oh, you, you, okay. Right. You sneaky step. Got you. Yeah. It's like yeah. sneaky step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the what? astral what? elf Opportunity version attack? of it. Nice. <laughs> and I'm hoping I can do something else neat from here. All right. That's me. Okay. Now it's the Dulahan. And he sways back and forth a little bit. But the gnashing skull attempts to bite yet again. 30-20. Yep, that'll hit. For five regular, eight necrotic. So 13 total, which I am significantly injured. And I need to make my constitution save against a 10. 10 or half the damage. And this wasn't over 20, so yeah, against a 10. It's a 13. Whew. <laughs> that was too close for comfort. Okay. All right. I think it's my turn, yeah? It is your turn. Cool. A bonus action. I'm going to make him make his saving throw for the damage on the heat metal. Come on. You have not failed one the entire time. <laughs> and I threw out a dirty 20, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm using TV on. They're all right here. Unbelievable. Dang. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm sure they're legit. I just, the number of saving throws that you have passed on this is but the remarkable. Constitution, yeah, it's been crazy. It's that's been, yep. that's been nuts. Okay. All right. Well, Nath will look over at that Finnegan. So you said you want, you, you said you want to make a spoon from the skull, right? Yeah. A spoon. Cool. Then Rotham psychic lance on the, Big guy. I need him to make me an intelligence save. Intelligence save, which he has not been as successful with. 11. It fails. Why can't he do that to the heat metal saves? That's, uh, <laughs> like right. his axe. <laughs> so, axe is se mine. 76 in psychic damage. Okay. Seven. Oof. Looks like 30. How do you want to do this? Again, he's like, after, I mean, he's down to six hit points, so he's he is definitely hurting, and he just takes his last remaining amount of concentration and focus and just focuses it on 
how hurt he was that he cheated in the competition because you really just were like we won fair and square and you cheated you're a dirt dirty cheater and i just i you just hear his heart like tinkle as a uh, as sarathum just just calls him a cheater to his face and you crush him from within exactly. you wake up the spirit of honor he once had as a live warrior and it crushes him yeah his armor crumples in on itself as though he's imploding <sighs> and nothing but his axe Remains. In the yes. A moment to go. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Don't touch that. It's still explodes. hot. <laughs> it's still hot. Don't touch that. <laughs> Don't touch that. <laughs> I will. I will run up to where he was and then tentatively like walk around the axe and just blow on it a bunch. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and like my hands on it. So I think I can probably <laughs> get grab like it, cloak, like. get the cloak and try to cool it off. And as soon as I can, I'm picking this thing up. Guys, guys, oh. you go see if you can get the book. I'm going to go wake up some ghosts and I'll just pick up the axe and strike a chord <laughs> in the middle of the graveyard. As you strike that chord, a ghost materializes on the steps. Sweet. And he's the faint glowing form of a tiefling dressed in some form of finery and he's carrying a corporeal book not an incorporeal book but a corporeal book in his hands and as he approaches he says curl <clears throat> excuse me let me try again curl my horns and call me a satyr you actually killed him <laughs> yeah we did he did and i'll point it so many have come before but none have ever succeeded here, take my book out into the world. And he hands you a book that says The Tales of Revelry the Bard. <gasps> yes! Nice. Amazing. So, you lads enjoy the book, and then I'll put the axe on my shoulder. Which, by the way, this axe is way the heck too big for me. But <laughs> it I'm totally you know, right. like, it's half this it's massive weird. axe guitar and be like, Twice I got what I came for. <laughs> yeah, it's your size. It's like the size of you. <laughs> it's the size of me. I love it. <laughs> Ergo will stand over the body and he'll look down at it. Beard, and I will carry this tale into the stars. You son of a bitch, we are the best there has ever been. Yes. <laughs> and somewhere in the distant part of the graveyard, you hear. <laughs> <laughs> which was the end of that song oh goodness what a fabulous scenario glenn first of all like that was that, brilliant that, really that was so much like, fun what so much fun and i love the way that you brought in revelry the bard when you said curl my horns and call me a satyr i was like wait a minute that sounds awful familiar why do i know that and that's what <laughs> all mm -hmm. the time so well done on that front yeah awesome. this was good that was, this was good that was brutal had us on the ropes i never felt it was unfair but i was definitely struggling was a smidge, to be fair to make it extra deadly and creepy mm -hmm. for the halloween factor the dulahan's yeah. second form is an additional amount of experience that was not calculated in the deadly yeah. encounter yeah gotcha yeah. I mean, that also made for a great baddie since yeah. y'all were fighting like, him and doing that okay, you had awesome. healing yeah yeah that yeah. was a great that was a great baddie and yeah. we got to have a bar battle at the front which is that's what you need in every bar <laughs> yeah. counter so that was perfect oh yeah yeah and i had no doubt in my mind that they were gonna that that's, this dude was gonna let us walk away either i was like oh no even if we beat this no. dude, nah, this is not no we're gonna have to throw down that's yeah Color me naive. I actually thought we might have got out of it with that <laughs> <laughs> what was that going yeah, I I couldn't be certain y'all would participate in the bard battle, but I was pretty oh, yeah. sure. I was pretty I sure mean, that at least one of you would fight on the challenge I, from hell. Oh yeah, I, I, any to throw down. I did try to use dissonant whispers on him uh, during the battle, so <laughs> participate in air quotes. I had it gone multiple rounds. I had a couple tricks I was going to try to do during that, but I was going to do some vicious mockery. I was going to twist the drum thing, spin it on my fingers, uh, and uh, do a uh, vicious mockery at, at him or something like that. Try to. Yeah. Once you're yeah, I thought about drawing the Bard battle part out longer and multiple mm -hmm. rounds, so to speak, but I already knew it was delaying the inevitable combat, and check it out, we're at midnight, so I'm glad. Yeah, that's fine. Really fun. Really great. That um, was awesome. And, I enjoyed it. That's well, a again, brilliant Halloween scenario. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Like I was uh, hoping that uh, y'all would like yeah. it for a creepy ass Halloween. Oh yeah. I'm sorry yeah. we lost the creepy music because that would have. I was really. Oh, we'll make sure. Yeah, yeah I, sure I was vibing that, that as well. But yeah, we'll make it, was, sure it was helping me with yeah. pacing too. I was like slowing yeah. down and letting the music carry <laughs> it. Yeah. 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 Get some spooky Halloween vibes. As always, called. Thank you so very much for joining us. Hope that thank you have fun you once again. So it's much for me. For these. It's so much fun. Such a blast. I have such a good time every single time. So thank you so very much for having me. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you know, and uh, once again, I think that this is going to be this is going to be very interesting when we actually start talking about the Bard class when we get to those yeah. episodes because mm -hmm. once again, it puts some perspective. Like I, I won't spoil, but I definitely had some thoughts on how I could proceed with this character, mm -hmm. and it did not go quite to plan. So yeah. it was their spellcasting ability is no joke. That yeah. psychic glance spell is no joke. Yeah, so. that, that that that's a top tier spell. But yeah. they don't have a lot of offensive spells. Bards right. are really low on offense in general. That, that was what, that part was of what I that. liked about the College of Lore, allowing you to take spells from other classes. You can get some heavier hitting offensive spells. And this was the first time I'd ever played a bard before. And I was, again, I think I had some very biased misconceptions coming in along that line. So when your party is dying and all you can do is play your instrument. And <laughs> I think that at least in my experience playing this subclass, that it's not deserving of that at all, because I was surprised at how much versatility I could pack into one, one single thing. And beyond what we've been able to explore here, just with the class warfare is that what you can do with skills and languages with a bard just opens up all kinds of doors when it comes to yeah. role play and gameplay outside Absolutely. of combat too, which is really cool. Yeah. Like what were you um, dropping like a plus 13 on your intimidation? Yeah, I had a plus Holy 13 crap. on intimidation. I had plus 12 on acrobatics and I had a plus nine on stealth because I chose expertise in those. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, you can do uh, all me, kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, for me, I was rocking a, an eleven on deception, an eleven on persuasion, and an eleven on stealth. College of Whispers is no joke. They they are as good as a rogue in 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 just about everything except for whatever that specific thing that a rogue like a rogue thief will be just sl bet slightly better than the College of Whispers. Mm -hmm. A rogue assassin will be slightly better than the College of Whispers, but in a well, with more spellcasting ability, it makes up for that. Yeah, with the spellcasting ability, but my ability to just be in places as an astral elf, like I can be thirty feet away, and I, I had the ability. Yeah. It just didn't really. It wasn't going to be useful in this scenario to use greater invisibility. These are things that like. There's some really impressive things that this character yep. can do. And we're fighting dead guys, so some of my abilities are just do not work here. If we were fighting living minions, I would have turned them into I would have turned at least one of them into a thing that would have been helping me. So we would have had an ally, but they were already dead, so I didn't think nice. that worked in that scenario. Well, greater invisibility would have let you hide, though the uh, Dulahan has true sight. Yep. <laughs> so that wouldn't yeah. Have mattered, yeah. But yeah, nobody else would have been, none of the rest of them would have been able to see. Higher level yeah. undead are going to see through invisibility. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. That one fireball wouldn't have seen me, but I probably would have been in the area anyway. So yeah. it wouldn't have mattered either. <laughs> yep. Fair enough. All right, gentlemen. Cool. It's called. Appreciate the Good time time. As always. And, Thank you all so much. Uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll be in touch. I'm not sure when we're going to be doing the next one because so Bard is actually the last class that we have to discuss, but we have not done class warfares for all of the classes yet. Correct. So, we've got to go backwards uh, on some of those. Yeah, we've got to go nice. backwards on some of those. And we've got some good ones. We've got like Ranger, Cleric, Paladin, Fighter. Warlock. No, no. no we've got Fighter. Yeah. We've got some good ones to go ahead and pick from, I would imagine, uh, probably in the new year. Awesome. Yeah, I'm so we... down for any and all. Just oh, say the word. I love great. it. Absolutely, we we will absolutely be uh, be reaching out to you because I think it's your turn. It's your turn to run. I think next, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I think it's your turn, Josh. Is it? No, is I it? ran. No, he ran. He ran. I ran you ran the I, I, ran, I ran monk. Okay, I guess. Yeah, I, I, that's right. Yeah, I ran monk. You, you ran druid. We stay in an order. Yeah. So it's Scald's turn next. I think it's my turn next. Yep. yep. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yes. So, it was, yeah. Because it would have been monk. Yeah. Druid and then bards. So no whatever bard. we do next. Yep. So whatever we do next. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, thank you. Excellent. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for listening as always. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again next week. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Mm -hmm.